Welcome to a very special episode of Strongest Hearts, where we're working with not one, but six vegan strength athletes that are part of the Plant Built team. In July, they are traveling to the Naturally Fit Games, an entire weekend of competitions, including CrossFit, powerlifting, and bodybuilding. These athletes spend an entire year training hard with a strict diet to prepare for this one day. With only a few weeks remaining before the games, we're here to see how these athletes deal with the emotional and physical stress leading up to such a monumental day. Right now we got a couple trainers just working out, um, as well as gentlemen training a client. It's Gary, this is Mike. So we're in Southeast Industrial Portland. I've been here for the last two years, and I took over the gym last fall and changed the name to Iron Ethos Fitness Community and been running it as a group fitness facility and private training studio. Two years ago, Giacomo, Robert, Ed, myself, Danny, all kind of just sitting at a table talking about what if we created this team, this community, of showing the strength of veganism in daily life and going out in our community and competing. Wouldn't that be awesome? Plant Built was an idea formed to show people that vegans can be athletes. I mean, that was the whole purpose. And we started with bodybuilding because obviously that's what the founders of the organization were involved in. It's been known for a while publicly that there are vegan athletes competing in triathlons or as cyclists and other endur more endurance-based events, but there hasn't been too many vegans that have been successfully competing in strength-based or muscle-based sports. I mean, I would just say the goals are essentially awareness in the fitness community that like vegans can hold their own in terms of like building muscle, like performing well, like looking good, skill sets, whatever, you know? Then we're gonna wrap out. It's the, uh, the Naturally Fit Games. Uh, last year it was called the Naturally Fit Super Show, but it's essentially just a big fitness event. So there's bodybuilding, figure competitions, um, there's just different facets of, of fitness. So there's gonna be a CrossFit competition that Billy and I are both gonna do. Um, there's powerlifting, I think there's jujitsu. there's like kettlebell workshops, there's parkour, and I think there's a car show too, for good measure. We want to go there, we want to win, like do as best as we can and then show the world that like veganism is not a limitation in any way. It's, it's tested, it's drug tested. So you either have to pee in a cup or take a lie detector test, something to, to validate that you are in fact drug free so you don't take steroids, you don't take anabolic growth hormones, things like that. So because in bodybuilding, like when you see Mr. Olympia or the Arnold Classic, which was just last weekend, they're way bigger than humans, you know, they look like superhuman because they all take steroids. So that's a non-tested show. So they, open, they openly take steroids and that's just how it is? It's like the unspoken, really? but everybody knows it thing, yeah. If okay. there's a show that's known not to be tested, that's basically known that yes, steroids are accepted. Yeah. They're not going to test you, your people are going to do whatever it takes, whatever yeah. they can get away with. So this is just going to be the second year, and again, the first year we only had about 14, 15 people, and then this year we have, I think, 50. This is my first powerlifting competition ever in my life. I, I mean, I haven't even seen one. And um, so I'm just gonna go there and hopefully, hopefully do my best. Really tall and really short, really fast. Last year, on May 20th, I had a surgery and um, I basically went vegan because I wanted to heal faster, because I wanted to be back in the gym as soon as I could. I've been a personal trainer in Seattle and was always pushing things on people like we were eating, you know, cans of tuna during our workouts and drinking milk all the time. And I never realized how disgusting I felt all the time until I felt great most of the time. I'm a cardiac rehab therapist, so I work with cardiac patients. A previous patient came in, was working out in our gym, and he looked Phenomenal. He had lost the extra 20 pounds or so that he couldn't lose before. Uh, he was doing Zumba. He was like 65, 70 years old. And I told him, I said, oh my gosh, you look fantastic. What happened? He said, well, I watched Forks Over Knives and I'm plant-based. And he said, have you seen the documentary? I went, no, you know, 
we've been talking about some floating around. I haven't seen, I don't have time for that. I'm a bodybuilder. And I said, okay, fine. I will watch Forks Over Knives this weekend. Sat down a Saturday morning, turned it on, watched Forks Over Knives, turned it off, looked at my husband and said, I'm vegan. I cannot do what I do in life. I absolutely cannot go back to work and not live this lifestyle. I deal with heart disease. I deal with all of these issues. I can't do it. I can't tell someone they need to do it without living it myself. I met somebody who was in town doing an internship who was vegan and they told me why and essentially it was to help with a thyroid condition they had. It just kind of made me want to try eating only vegetables for a month. And then I ate vegetables and legumes for about a month and I felt amazing. Stress level was down, energy level was up. Like, why am I not doing this all the time? And then I was like, why am I not doing this all the time? <laughs> And then I, I, I stuck with it. So I've described myself as a health vegan because of how I became vegan, but I've you know, made friends with people who kind of explained, you know, veganism is also about consent in many different ways, whether it's with animals or people that you interact with. Um, also, you know, meeting Ed, he definitely showed me the side of animal rights that kind of was already there for me to begin with, but how deep that goes, you know, watching Vegucated, watching Earthlings, uh, no longer being um, ignorant to the fact of what takes place um, in our consumer lives <laughs> that, you know, we need to act better upon. You know, you learn more and more about where your food comes from, how it gets to your table. You learn the ethical portion of it, and it becomes devastating. And I truly was ignorant. I was asked, what if you find out that you need to have easy animals or animal products to live a long, healthy life? And I said, well, I'll die a very short, unhealthy life. Because now, ethically, I can't go back. So it's been ever since then, and no looking back. Thrilled I did it. Because the same time I had my surgery, and I had spent every last cent I had on that, I um, found out that my dog needed $4,000 eyeball surgery. He was about to go blind. He was already blind in one eye, um, which I then spent $4,000 cash fixing. And he can see, so it kind of, I kind of thought about it and was thinking why would I spend $4,000, like the last cent I have, on fixing a four pound dog's vision. And, feel fine eating meat. Um, and so that's when I did it for ethical reasons. Nutrition is an absolutely key component for all bodybuilders. Can you do that without animal products? Of course you can, and that's what this vegan team is showing. It is really cool to be here and have people be like, I didn't know actually vegans could be that strong. You've, a couple people have said like, we've changed their views, which is yeah. neat. Yeah, that's uh, a good first step. One of the owners of this gym actually met me last year at a, my friend Colleen's house at a party and I was just about getting ready to go to Austin and so I was very lean and very de defined and he was like, whoa, like you are ripped and you're vegan. Like he was definitely blown away by, he didn't think vegans could look like that. Just being a, a woman and being muscular here like encourages the other girls to think like I want to be muscular and I can do it. In any kind of diet or any kind. They of do. They pep up when you're around. <laughs> Start doing curls. <laughs> I first got interested in vegan bodybuilding. Uh, one, I was training a lot at a local gym, and all the trainers kept asking, "How do you get your protein?" I was like, "Simple. I eat this, this, and this." I'm like, are there even any strong vegans out there? And I'm like, "Yeah, I think I'm kind of strong." So Austin's going to be my first powerlifting meet. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to hit a 365 pound squat, if not heavier at Austin, based off of how my training's been going. Like, cause I spent the last five weeks trying to put on a significant amount of muscle mass. Yeah. And so she had me eating a lot, even though I was still at lesser calories. And we don't wanna lose that. Oh yeah. I went from 108, pound, 108 pounds at competition weight and I'm at, I got up to 120. Almost. Oh shit. Yeah. The muscle. 
I don't know, fat too. I mean, it's got fat also. So it's kind of a mind game. Yeah. I was playing roller derby, I, or attempting to play roller derby, kind of, for about a year and a half, and I really didn't enjoy it. And I was miserable and not enjoying going to practice and not enjoying that lifestyle. I had finally decided that I was done and thought, oh, maybe I'll just go to the gym. I need something to do to keep me in shape. Um, and again, I'm not the kind of person who's like, oh, I'll just show up at the gym. I want to have a goal in mind. And I thought, you know what? I want to do this vegan competitor thing. I can do this. Even if it's not, you know, being on the plant-built team, I want to try doing this. And so that's kind of how it got started. And it kind of just snowballed and became this, this thing that I'm doing now. And I would never, I would not go back. I love it. I am a figure bodybuilder. So I do figure competitions, which are uh, more on size, shape, and symmetry. It's a, it's a visual thing, so you still have to have, uh, it's almost like a, still a, an athletic female form. I, I didn't do it to stay in shape, because I, I was in shape. It's something I enjoy doing. I like the feel of lifting weights. I like the feel of, of pushing my body outside my limits. I like the feel of being really sore the next day. And I like having muscles. I like it when I'm doing a blood pressure and the patient grabs onto my arm and goes, oh my gosh, there's something under that sleeve. So that, I, I, kinda, I kinda like it. As a public health dietitian, I know how crucial community is in making healthy behavior changes. I am incredibly impressed by the plant-built team and the community that they have built to support one another and inspire everyone around them. I would say that plant the Plant Built team, and, and specifically working with Danny, um, has really made the difference in not only maintaining this lifestyle, but even just knowing where to begin. You know, you hear so many people say things like, oh, I tried to be vegetarian once and I lost so much weight, or I tried to be vegan and I just wasn't healthy and I felt really sick. And so having the support of even knowing what options there are and what things there are to eat and what's out there and what will really fuel my body has made a huge difference in making this be successful. Getting my public health degree and the process of learning everything that I have, um, it's helped me become a better personal trainer because I understand some of the underlying issues that take place outside of their time in the gym. Um, things about how to acquire better food sources, how to put yourself in better healthy situations, um, how to find ways to be fit or participate in fitness outside of the gym as well. And that's what it's got to be. Like, it can't just be this one little portion of your life. Like, every, all the choices that you end up making, people you hang out with, food you eat, where you're living, you know, things that you have control over, try to use that control to the best of your advantage. There's so much preparation that goes into looking a specific way and you hope that you look the very best you possibly can look for one day, for several hours. And it's all this build up to that and you just hope that you can get your body to that place. And it's kind of a guess on what works for you, what doesn't work, what is gonna make you peak, what may make you look flat. And it's all trying to trust that you follow these particular formulas that have worked for you know, hundreds of other people before, and you hope that it's gonna work for you, and you just don't know, so it can be very nerve wracking. I think the, the part that makes me the most nervous about competing in powerlifting is just, you know, if, if you're just having an off day, like maybe you lift 10 pounds less, then you know that in your best, on your best day you could lift. And so that, that kind of does make it a little nerve wracking because you don't want to have that off day where you don't perform up to your best ability. I mean, it was a really big fear of mine and still is for a long time. I keep saying like, oh, what if I just suck and I just make us look stupid? But you know what? There's actually been a couple of other people who said the same thing, so it makes me feel better that we all kind of had the same fear of like, what if we're just not good enough? I don't want to be the vegan that shows you other wimps. I want to be able to walk on stage as a vegan, as a pro bodybuilder, and still be very competitive. And so that's my nerves, is never being able to really be competitive amongst the crowds that are there. I would say uh, lifting in front of those who are competitors and those who aren't competitors definitely has me nervous. You know, that, 
I might fail in front of somebody. Uh, that's definitely a part of the nervousness. Whew. Yeah. Definitely dream about it from time to time, like being in front of people, about just going through the movements, um, about the camaraderie that's gonna go on with the other power lifters, or the bodybuilders, or the crossfitters. Just the kind of celebration that, look what we're doing. You know, look what we're showing people. What happens if you don't place at Austin? Oh God, I'll probably cry. <laughs> Are you saying the answer or cry? No. I know you're gonna cry. Yeah, <laughs> I had to think about what I would, because I, I definitely thought of it, because it's a good possibility. God, what will I do? Gosh, if I don't place in Austin, I think I'll be disappointed for sure. Um, but I also think honestly I'm relying on my support system there to bring me back to earth a little bit because um, there is a very real possibility that I won't place but I also can't focus on that so I think I'm, I'm going to give it my all and try to prepare for that. If I don't place I will be okay with that because I still held true to my morals. You know maybe if there's a time where people feel they didn't do anything, everything that they could to win, and it's because they had, you know, they cheated on their diet. Even if I cheated on my diet, I still know that I didn't contribute to suffering. And to me, that's winning in this sport. That's a really big deal to me, that this isn't just to get me through to Austin. I'm not, you know, I'm living a vegan lifestyle. This is for beyond that. I think the accomplishment is just the going to Austin and competing. Um, that alone says that, you know, I came, I saw, I did. Um, not only for myself, but the entire team that's showing up. Um, you know, we've known about this for almost a year now. We've all been prepping for almost a year now. It's a whole accumulation of our life of the last year comes to Austin and it's you know it's, it's the crescendo if you will um, of our competition and it just that release is going to be amazing. I had absolutely no idea how much work goes into preparing for these competitions and what a driving force veganism is for these athletes. I'm excited for the Naturally Fit Games but I'm also nervous. Good luck to all our athletes and we'll see you in Austin.